So, today, we're going to be talking about Dwight Howard. Not this Dwight Howard, but this Dwight Howard. As a basketball fan, you got to wonder, how can the man go from the top of the world, competing in the finals, being a dominant force, being the best big man in the league, to virtually a guy that's just jumping around the league. He's been on four teams in the past several years. So, it makes you think, what was this guy's downfall? Like I said, this guy went from being the top of the world to absolute zero. No more Superman Dwight Howard anymore. People don't even like him. They say he's corny, immature, you know, doesn't put effort in. Was it his run with the Lakers where Kobe kind of, you know, put the bar too high for him, made him feel out of character? He didn't want him smiling. Was it, you know, with the Rockets where he found out he wasn't going to be that top guy anymore. He wasn't going to get the post touches he wanted. With all these conflicting issues, Dwight Howard thought the best idea that would fix all his problems was to just go back and play for his hometown, Atlanta. But... They didn't work out so well. There was way too many rumors about conflicting issues between Dennis Schroeder and Dwight Howard. Just players in general about Dwight Howard. He he wasn't putting in the effort. This is supposed to be your big man. The man is 6'11", a physical monster. But he's not even going to put effort. He's going to let smaller guys out-rebound him. So as much as Dwight Howard wants to blame other people for not giving him the ball when he's posting up, for not, you know, putting, giving him an offensive role as much as he should, he has nothing for himself to blame for the misery, his downfall, his demise, everything that's happened to him in his past couple years. Why? Because he simply never grew up. Constantly, we hear everybody say that the NBA is a grown man's league and he simply wasn't a grown man still at even age 30 31 how he calls people at halftime because he's worried about what other people think about his performance the fact that he wears shirts like this because he thinks he's gonna get a good laugh out of it the fact that he thinks it's okay to grab his you know somebody's nuts while they're on the bench is not as a problem. But, you know, some might say he did all this stuff when he was young. You know, why do, Why does it matter now? That's because we can put up with an 18-year-old, 19-year-old doing this, but not somebody who's in their late 20s to early 30s. No, it's not acceptable. And maybe it's not all Dwight Howard's fault. He grew up pretty conservative, didn't go out much, didn't know what, Things or didn't know about things we usually experience in our teenage years until he got to the NBA. He was raised in a very religious and Christian home, didn't want people cursing around him, but and that's no excuse. But in my honest opinion, I really think there's something wrong with Dwight Howard. Not that he's like mentally challenged, not that he's something you know, something similar, but I really think he has some type of you know, mental block with his confidence because his confidence is so bad. He doesn't put any effort when he shuts down and he doesn't feel like he's accepted or if he's needed. I mean, after his run with the Rockets, he considered retiring at age like 28. And it says something about Dwight Howard. It's not that he doesn't like himself, but he doesn't like the fact that nobody outside can accept who he truly is it's the always smiling everything's a game everything's a joke you know the world revolves around him type of guy but it's not and when he found out that people didn't accept that he would listen into what people believe that he should be and to be honest it really did start in LA with his downfall because that's where I felt like he got the most critique to his game. He tried to be, you know, he tried to tap into Kobe's persona, which just wasn't Dwight Howard. He didn't have that assassin face and that killer instinct. And he tried to play through injuries, which ultimately just made him play, you know, it wasn't that he wasn't putting up the numbers. It's just he wasn't the, the, the Orlando Magic Dwight Howard. And when Kobe bashed him for that, 
he shut down. And when you don't have a happy Dwight Howard, you have a no Dwight Howard. So, as much as everybody thought that being with the Mamba would help Dwight Howard toughen up, it ultimately brought him to his downfall because it put him in a shell, which everybody in the NBA world seen when Dwight Howard wasn't Dwight Howard anymore. And some might also say that Dwight Howard still puts up big numbers. Dwight Howard still, you know, is effective at protecting the rim. He's still a shot blocker. But can you ask me or can you tell me why every year we ask, is this going to be the year Dwight Howard comes back if he's still putting up? No, don't get me wrong. He's still a starter. But why is it that we ask ourselves every year, is this the year Dwight Howard comes back? And we ask ourselves again as he comes in with a new team in the Charlotte Hornets. And I say no. Dwight Howard does not have the capability of coming back to any type of, you know, peak form. May not even be an all-star this year, even though with a diminished East. I just don't see him any type. He, anytime he gets critiqued or offended, he shuts down and doesn't play to his full potential. Other than that, I'm going to be wrapping it up. If you'd like to hear me discuss any more topics uh, revolving around the NBA, comment them down below. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications button when I upload new videos. Also, if you're a fan of Through the Wire, which is a podcast I am a part of with KOT4Q and a couple other guys, make sure you comment those down below if you want to hear some uh, NBA topics and we might take them into consideration and you might hear them on one of your favorite podcasts. Like I said, other than that, I'm signing out.